Today we'll be discussing more about interview processes for customer success managers and we'll be using the Miro process as an example. Every interview process is different but they have a lot of similarities and you can use this when applying to Miro or anywhere else. Welcome to the Life at Miro YouTube channel, let's get started. Hey, I'm Laura, and I'm leading one of our customer success teams here at Miro. And I'm Andrea, I'm the recruiter responsible for hiring for customer success at Miro, and I work with hiring managers like Laura. The first step of the customer success process here at Miro is the recruiter screen. And during recruiter screen, we're gonna explore more about your overall experience and potential fit with the requirements for the role in Miro. So we will probably start with a very high level question to get to know more about you. And it not normally goes something like, hey, we know customer success varies a lot organization to organization. So we're eager to learn what is customer success to you and what are your main responsibilities as a customer success manager? So we ask these questions to make sure that it's a mutual fit and that the experience uh, that the candidate has matches with how we do customer success at Miro. Customer success at Miro um, is not a commercial role. Um, we are measured by creating meaningful relationships with our customers, driving value, driving adoption, driving engagement. Um, and yeah, we just want to make sure that this is very clear from the beginning to set the right expectations from the start. Once we heard a little bit more about your overall experience with customer success, we want to dig a little bit deeper on your book of business. So the next question will be around how many customers you're responsible for and for you to share a little bit more about uh, what are their sizes, industries and your overall relationship with them. I think here it's important to understand that we have different customer success organizations within Miro. So we have the portfolio team, which is more responsible for scalable digital initiatives. So here we would look for a different profile compared to hiring for an enterprise or a strategic customer success managers, who usually has a portfolio in between 10 to 30 customers and is working uh, with them on a very high engagement, high touch model. Uh, so again, this question is to find out that whether their experience um, is matching uh, on, on what we expect from the different roles that we're recruiting. Yeah, and there's no right and wrong answer here. It's for us to get to know you and also assess like which of the teams would be the best fit for you. And it's actually normal for us to move people around pipelines and teams. And maybe during the assessment, we're going to get to the conclusion together that even though you applied or was reached out for one particular team, maybe another one would be the best fit and we're going to be completely transparent about it and probably introduce you to someone else. I think that the final question that you're going to face during the recruiter screen is about how do you build a relationship with customers and how do you drive uh, value with them? And here we look for answers uh, where the uh, candidate already shows their strategic approach to customer success that we, they know how to create meaningful relationships, strong relationships, um, trying to figure out the business goals of the customers and then understanding on how we can tie those goals back to Miro yeah. and create uh, the best outcome and the best value for them. And it's also important to keep in mind that even though the recruiter screen is more high level for us to get to know your experience, we're also expecting examples from your experience. So we know like, okay, so this person worked with something similar in the past it's different or not from what we're currently doing in Miro and we can also help you prep for the next step which is the hiring manager screen. Moving forward to the hiring manager screen there are three topics we're gonna go deeper with you. The first one is the strategic thinking then it's gonna be about cross-functional collaboration and lastly work management. When digging into your strategic approach we're gonna explore with you about a time in which you had to create a strategic and creative approach to drive adoption and engagement with your customers. And here we are looking for a specific example um, on how, how the um, customer success manager engages with the customers. What kind of strategies do they come up? 
to kind of think outside of the box uh, in, in the way that we hire. We always look to level up our team and look for skills and approaches that are like outside of what we are currently doing. So the more creative and the more strategic it is, the better. Um, and we've been having some great answers there in the past. And yeah, it's a great question to really show on what can you bring to the team and how can you bring us to the next level. The second question about strategic thinking will be surrounding a time in which you identified a root cause of a problem and how you did that. So which kind of tools, uh, resources and teams you involved to identify that root cause and most importantly solve it with your customer. Yeah. One of our values uh, at Miro is learn, iterate and drive change. And this is exactly what we're looking for in this question is to find what is the actual problem, to do a discovery with the customer, dig deep uh, before you come up with a strategic solution. Um, and I think here it's also important to not only rely on yourself, but also rely on your stakeholders, work cross-functionally to make sure that we offer the best solutions to our customers. Moving forward to the second topic, during hiring manager screens, we're going to get into cross-functional collaboration. And this will be explored by asking you about a time in which a decision made by another team impacted your customer in not the best way. So how, what did you do to solve that situation and how did you align with all the teams to find a creative solution that would improve the experience with the customer. As we work with many, many stakeholders, not only externally uh, with our customers, but also internally, it's so important to align uh, with each of those teams. Uh, these teams are usually sales, uh, solutions engineering, product support, and we need to make sure that we all stay on the same page um, and engage in feedback conversations, be empathetic and be understanding, not only towards our customers, but also towards uh, our internal teams, just to make sure that we deliver the best experience to our enterprise customers. Another thing that we're looking for is the quality of active listening um, and being able to yeah, engage in sometimes yeah, difficult feedback conversations, be able to provide constructive feedback, but also um, be able to receive the constructive feedback, um, which I think is very, very important if you're working with like a lot of people internally as well as externally. We are also looking into your abilities to navigate an environment with a lot of different teams. So if you can be proactive, if you know who to reach out and when, um, and as Laura mentioned, how to align everyone in the same page. Yeah. So it's not only about building strong relationships with the customers, building a strong customer network, but maybe even equally or probably equally is important to build a strong network within your own uh, organization with all those teams that you engage on a day-to-day -day basis. The last topic of your hiring manager screen will be about work management. So we're going to explore how do you prioritize it. When it comes to prioritization, uh, we usually look at the account health. Um, as well as um, yeah, the AR, which is the annual recurring revenue, which means like the value of the of the customer, the account size, um, and it is so important to prioritize since usually each customer success manager not only has one or two accounts but several accounts. So um, for us to be able to be successful in our job, it is important to understand where should we focus on. How do we manage our own time um, and also our customers' time? And this is, I would say, the baseline uh, of every customer success manager to be able to analyze your book of business, your customer patch, and then decide on what is your prioritization strategy. So this is like a very important question for us. If everything goes well during the hiring manager screen, the next step is going to be the case study. In the case study, we're going to share a document with you beforehand, and this will probably have a little bit of information around a customer and can be a role play or even a walkthrough of what your customer engagement would look like. And the role play is joined by the hiring manager as well as someone else from the customer success team who will um, be there to engage. Sometimes, again, if it's a role play, they would play the customers 
And the skills that we look during that uh, part of the interview process is presentation skills. Are you able to create a clear agenda? Are you able to push for next steps? How do you engage with the customer? Is the discovery part uh, empathetic? Do you actively listen to what the customer has to tell? And are you able to put all of this together in a strategic way? Uh, being very clear um, and uh, this is I would say the most challenging part uh, of the interview process and the one that we really figure out is this a potential fit for our team or is are there maybe some areas of improvement that the person still needs to work on and we do have a prep call with you before the case study so we can share all the tips and tricks on how to be successful and what exactly the team is looking for with the exercise you're going to be given but we are also looking into time management so really knowing how to manage your time setting a clear agenda setting up the information in a way that you know you're not going to pass over the uh, time frame that we have there will be crucial for you to be successful in that stage. Yeah. And sometimes if we have enough time and if the time management is great, um, the hiring manager and the other person joining, um, they, they uh, usually have a couple of minutes time to share their feedback as well. Yeah. Uh, so since we have a huge feedback culture, uh, we're also um, more than happy to already discuss uh, during the interview itself how, what went well, what are, again, some areas that the candidate could improve on, just to also be very transparent and, and yeah. open. And it's also great to keep in mind that you're not going to present it all by yourself and then have a conversation with the people in the call. We're expecting to be an interactive presentation. So expect the team to ask you questions during the presentation and also be prepared to answer those questions. When you're thinking about time management, consider that there's going to be a little bit of back and forward. And I think one tip that I can give as well is you will probably not be able to answer all the questions that we ask because it yeah. can be very tricky questions. And I think then it's here on like, how do you manage expectations? Like, how do you answer questions where you're just not skilled enough or you don't know the answer, which is not the problem. But here we look for like, how do you deal with those situations? Yeah, especially because those situations are going to happen with your customers as well, 100%, right? 100%, yeah, <laughs> all the time. So you need to be prepared for that. The next interview will be what we call the values interview. And the goal of this interview is to better explore if your ways of working are aligned with our company values. Miro's values are collaboration, empathy, iteration and impact. There are a couple of questions at the behavioral interview that can quite often leave people a little bit afraid of answering and not sure of how they should answer. So for instance, have you ever received a tough feedback and how did you react to that? Or have you, have you ever been challenged in your opinion or approach and what have you done about it? And we appreciate uh, that uh, if candidates are open and honest with us uh, and we are aware that this is these questions are very candid. We would like uh, for people to show us uh, with, that, with their answer um, that they're able to reflect on themselves and on their own behavior um, and that they're able to admit mistakes. We all make mistakes. I think it's like something that we should all normalize and that, all, that I encourage as well. Um, and see it as an opportunity where we can learn from. And sometimes we have candidates who obviously don't like to talk about their flaws, but in this part of the interview, we definitely encourage that. And it's not only, it's not about the flaw, it's like, how do you act on it? Like, do exactly. you own it? Uh, and what do you uh, get out of it? Do you learn from it? Do you improve the next time you're going yeah. through a, diff a similar situation? Another topic often covered in values interviews is about computing priorities. So how do you handle your computing priorities and how do you choose the trade-offs for that? Miro is a very changing environment. Uh, so it can be that the priorities shift from time to time or that you have a lot of things on your plate and you should be able to yeah, juggle it and uh, uh, know how to prioritize things and also deprioritize things. Yeah, and we also care a lot about well-being. So we're not expecting you to say like, hey, I do everything at the same time, I can handle yeah. it all. 
we want to see how do you choose what to prioritize first and what can be left for a little bit later and also how do you align that with all the people that are involved in this decision-making process. Another thing that we may explore with you is about a time in which you got buy-in to make a change and how do you do that? Change management is something that we do on a day-to-day -day basis um, and uh, the first step is to get the buy-in from your internal stakeholders, so to align with your cross-functional teams um, and then uh, to, to speak to the customers, to do a very deep discovery on what are the things that we're looking for, how can we best support them in their change management process. And I would say uh, this is uh, sometimes uh, very, very tricky, very challenging, it requires a lot of empathy a lot of listening, um, a lot of creativity. And a lot of collaboration. <laughs> and a lot of collaboration, most importantly. It all starts with collaboration. You will notice that even though each question normally has one value in mind, we can assess more than one value per question. So keep all the values uh, on top of your head when you're thinking about the examples you want to share and showcase that you can truly embrace all four of them. Yeah, that, that's a great advice, definitely. We may also ask about a time in which you scale the best practice and how did you do it? We would like uh, someone who comes new to the team to show ownership um, and to also yeah, come up with scalable initiatives themselves. Uh, so it's great to see that they have a yeah, proven track of having done similar tasks uh, in their previous job and then that they bring this uh, towards, towards our team as well. Customer success at Miro is not only about taking care of book of business, but it's also about improving processes. It's about thinking about new processes. It's about innovation. Um, so that's what we want to see, if you can bring that all for the team. The final step of your process is the leadership interview. This is the moment that you're going to have the opportunity to get to know a senior leader of our customer success organization. And here we look for um, things like executive presence, maybe for for some flags or gaps that we have uh, discovered um, during the process. At this stage, you already met a lot of people from the customer success team. So the senior leadership will also be interested in learning your motivation. Now that you've met all those people, are you picturing yourself working with them? Are you engaged? How willing to join us you are? So keep that in mind when moving to that stage. And it's like always a, a two-way street, right? It's not only that we are looking for the best candidate, you are also looking for your best team and for the best organization and company. Uh, so there always should be a mutual fit. And you're probably gonna have questions that you can ask all steps of the way. Yeah. So to the team during team round, during your values interview, and even during leadership interview, especially during leadership yeah. interview. One, one very important thing for the leadership interview yeah. is please prepare questions. Our leaders love questions. That's also something that the recruiter can then uh, talk you through uh, yeah. and make sure that you're set up for success there. We are also gonna have a prep call before the leadership interview, so don't worry too much. Uh, but keep that in mind. This brings us to the end of today's video. Thank you so much for watching. If you've enjoyed it, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and like the video and we'll see you in the next one.